Welcome to Blue Stories, a collection of yarns spun by Jason Beachy. In these videos, he will be documenting the true and tall tales of his life and career as a superstar blues harmonica demon and God. You will hear first-hand accounts of his rise and fall and strange, seamy encounters with legends and obscure artists alike. Some of the names have been changed to protect the living. There are no innocents in the blues. Jason Ritchie, and welcome to a very special episode of Blue Stories. Today, we have the great Nick Moss. Nick's been on the road since he was a little kid with amazing artists like Jimmy Rogers, Sam Lay, Willie Smith, a whole mess of people. I mean, we just, it's the wealth of Blue Stories that we've been hearing this week while recording this record is unbelievable. So we're lucky enough to have enough time to get just a scratch on the surface of the many blues stories that this man has to offer. Today, Willie Big Eyes Smith. So Willie Big Eyes Smith. That's what we're doing. Is, yeah. I'm out of the way, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, Nick Moss. So, okay, well, it's good to be here. I don't know, you spit all over my, chroma my chromatic harmonica. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Anyways, good theme song, though. So, so I guess you, you had asked me a couple days ago to think of some stories. And th there are so many, it's hard to pick. It really is. But one, I think one of my favorite stories has to do with Willie Smith, with, with Big Eyes. For most of you guys who are familiar with the blues, some of you aren't. Willie was Muddy Waters' drummer for many years. Look him up. Great drummer. One of the best shuffle drummers in the history. Of blues. So this this event took place in Banff, in the, in the Canadian Rockies, up near Lake Louise. Never been there. A uh, beautiful national park. And we uh, had just left Calgary playing at the King Eddie Hotel. And while we were at the King Eddie, uh, you know, a lot of f old friends and fans used to show up. It was a week-long gig. It was one of those kind of that's nice in-stay gigs. Those are rare. It was a great gig. You know, it was a stripper club by day, a blues <laughs> club by night. We play the gig, wake up the next day in the afternoon, go downstairs and watch the strippers. Um, you know, as a young man, it had its advantages, but uh, <laughs> now it just upsets me. I can't, go to, I can't go to the strip club. It doesn't do anything for me. Really doesn't, you know? What's the point? You can't touch them, you can't touch yourself. Come on. <laughs> anyway. And I'm gonna give you money for that? That's yeah, just stupid. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so we we were leaving Calgary at the King Eddie and one of our good friends you like that, don't you? It's funny. We uh we were leaving Calgary and one of our good friends who happened to be there um, handed myself and the harmonica player at the time was this uh, young harmonica player named Ross Bond. Ross, great harmonica player, great singer, and went on to fame and fortune with the Mighty Blue Kings, and mm. uh, you know, and did stuff with Sam Lay and did stuff with Dave Spector. And Ross, a good dude. But anyways, one of our friends gave us this chocolate bar that had um, uh, organic. Um, an organic hallucinogenic effect, if you know it. <laughs> what I mean. <laughs> Baked into this chocolate bar. That's right. And this is, this is pork chop. He's going to help us with the store. Chopper! <laughs> he, he's a tag Jason. So, he said, look, you guys are going up to the Canadian Rockies, don't spam. It's gorgeous up there. If you've never been to the Canadian Rockies, you know, your Rockies down in America, eh? They're okay, eh? But the Canadian Rockies are something else. And it actually was true. They're unbelievable. He said, don't waste this candy bar on the ride. Yeah. Wait till you get there and you're settled in 
and you're gonna go for a nice long hike up in the mountains. And I'm like, dude, I'm never going for a nice long hike anywhere. And he's like, no, you need to do this. He says, you need to do this. Trust me on this. And I was like, all right. So we play this club up in, up up in uh, up near Lake Louise, and I can't remember the name of the club, but it's not important. And they gave us a <laughs> they gave us a, a band condo, which was outside of the main town in the mountains. We're we're probably six seven thousand feet up, anyways. And uh, they they gave us this you know rustic old co- you know cabin. It was great. You know had a wood burning stove. Had the percolator coffee pot going on there, you know, and nothing else. There was no TV, no radio. It was it was bare bones, but it was cool. And uh, we stayed there for like three days, even though we only had one night's gig. They said, "Oh, you guys can hang for a couple days." Mm-hmm. So we played the gig, and the next day, uh, Ross and I decided we're going to go and take this special hike and bring our our sustenance, our little chocolate bar that my friend had given us. And uh, we chose, okay, you know, get up early before the sun comes up. And we talked to some people in town that said, oh, there's this great path. Follow this path. It'll lead right alongside the mountain. You go all up and down the mountain along this path. And there's great views. So, okay, that's what we're going to do. So we wake up one morning, right before the sun's coming, about an hour before sunrise. You know, and uh, we pack our candy bar, we pack some water, we pack a few other herbal supplements, if you will, and uh, <clears throat> we, we quietly leave the cabin. Everyone's asleep. Our guitar player, Willie Greason's asleep. I was playing bass at the time, and Willie Smith, big eyes, is still asleep, and they're bad. So we quietly leave, and we make our way through the woods, and, you know, there's a little clearing, we hit the woods, and then we're looking for these, you know this path that the guy said, you can't miss it, there's a big rock. We find the rock, find the path. We work our way up the path. Pretty soon we're at the foot of of this little mountain path. Is that right? Anyway, dog's talking. So we're climbing up the pass, and it's everything everyone explained. It's beautiful. Did you guys take the chocolate bar yet? Oh, not yet. Okay. And, you know, it's just, you know, the sun is just starting to come up. It's not completely that bad. It's just starting to come up. And there's, you know, a valley below us, thousands of feet below us. And it's like literally right off this path. The path is this narrow. And I'm afraid of heights, but somehow it wasn't bothering me that day. It was just, there was too much beauty to be, you know, to be had. I was just taking it all in. So finally the sun is almost up, and we decide now's the time. Mm-hmm. Break that candy bar, break it in half. He takes half, I take half. And we wait, and like within minutes, <laughs> there's a cartoon landscape <laughs> in front of us, and it was like the most, like everything became sharper, everything became, car- the colors became more vivid, it was like you look at a pine tree across this, you know, this valley on the other side of the mountain over there, and the needles looked like they were this long and this big around on the on the pine tree. It was like, oh my god! And so we just continued going up, and man, there's bald eagles flying right next to us, yeah. like five feet away because yeah. we're that high up. Yeah, and we're like, and, and yeah. you could feel their wings, like the flap, the air, the flap of the way. It's like. Never occurred to us that it might be dangerous, but <laughs> <laughs> and, and actually, at one point, there was like this big tree growing completely perpendicular out out of the mountain instead of straight up. And Ross decided, you know, I could make that. Like he was going to jump for the tree and, and, and swing on it. He's like, I could make that. And I was like, Yeah, you could. Wait, no, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> I had a moment of clarity. I'm like, no, don't do that. <laughs> And he's like, no, I can do it. I'm like, you probably can, but don't. Don't, don't. So, anyways. Oh, gosh. You know, it was beautiful. It was it was great experience. Um, we decided, you know, we've had enough after a while. Yeah. And it's starting to wear off. And we make our way back down the path. And, you know, we still got some residual effect going on. We're still yeah. feeling pretty good. Yeah. We get out of the path. We get back into the woods. And as we get into the clearing of the woods, there's this clearing a couple, 
maybe 150 yards between the edge of the woods and where our cabin's sitting. I notice that there's um, a moose, like a full bull moose with like full rack in front of the cabin. And I look at Ross and, and I'm like, I kind of make the motion like, be quiet and slow down. So we're like moving really slow. We're still about 100, 150 yards away. Now it's becoming evident that the moose is not only, could have been an elk, I don't know, but it, it was a big bull, you know, it had a full rack. Full, it, it had its front paws up on the porch. You know, it was like two steps up to the porch kind of thing. But it had its front paws on the porch and its back paws, you know, on the ground. And like its whole head was underneath the overhang of the porch. Then I noticed that not only is that happening, but Willie Smith is sitting on a chair on the porch <laughs> outside the door of the cabin in long underwear. He's got long long johns on, you know, his pants and his shirt, and he's got his big black, you know, boots on, and his baseball hat that he always had on. And I'm like, what is Willie doing? I mean, he's going to get killed. And so we're moving slowly and slowly, and we finally get to this point, I'm like, we should stop, because I don't want to spook this moose and have it kill Willie. And we're looking, man, and I notice that... The moose hasn't moved. It's just kind of like just in this one spot like this. And they are like this, like as close as you and I are right now. That's how close the moose's face was no to Willie's face. No way. Yes. Well, this, is, this is true. <laughs> Willie has a joint in one hand. Okay. <laughs> and he's he's taking hints and he's like really cautiously or careful. And then he's holding it and he's going and blowing it in the face of this moose. And you see the moose go. He like his back's moving. It's like, it's just hanging there like letting him do this. And at, at some point I like look at Ross, I'm like, is this the candy bar? Or are you seeing what I'm seeing? <laughs> <laughs> and Ross is like, no man, if you're seeing Willie with a moose on the porch, then we're seeing the same thing. And, I, and you know, I'm like, holy crap. So I want to get closer to see what's happening. See this, man. So we start, like, we start like moving closer. And as we move closer, Willie must have caught us out of the peripherals. And he does one of these things while he's in mid toe. He goes. <laughs> Like, stay there, don't move. <laughs> so we're like... Well, a gust of wind must have caught, blown our scent. Scent of scent Because all of a sudden the moose goes... Like this and spooks and takes off running. And we're like, holy shit, man. We run up to the porch. And Willie's just still sitting there like that. And we're like, Willie, what the hell are you doing, man? I was... Oh, that was crazy. That was like a bull moose, man, like in your face. What are you doing? He said, oh, he just wanted to come up and say hi, as all. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. That's my story. Woo! <laughs> Fucking yeah. excellent. That was one right. of my favorite memories that I still have of, of the late, great, really big I said tonight. And I got to tell that story at his memorial so if there's any people that think oh that might have been a little inappropriate of a story to tell considering the uh, illicit substances or what whatnot i told this story to every one of his kids and family members <laughs> and they loved it yeah as well they, they should and, and really you know and you know was well known for his uh let's just say he was a proponent for the uh, the herbal uh, effects, and, and, <laughs> and uh, he, he never made any, too many bones about that. You know? yeah. so, just get right, get good, and get right. That's what you just said. <laughs> anyway. All right, Nick Moss, man, we appreciated it, cool. man.